Hi friends! Today we will learn about transforming electricity into kinetic energy and sound energy. So let's start. We know when a body is in motion, it possesses some kinetic energy. Let's first discuss how electricity is transformed into kinetic energy, as in how electricity can be used to produce motion in the object. Electrical energy can be transformed into kinetic energy by using the concept of electromagnetism. Have you ever noticed that there are a lot of electric motors working around you? For instance, we have motors in some toys, fans, washing machines, refrigerators, clocks, and vehicles. Everywhere we have electric motors. All those small motors work on the concept of electromagnetism. Let's discuss the working of an electric motor. An electric motor consists of a permanent magnet. This is the north pole of the permanent magnet, and this is the south pole of the permanent magnet. Electromagnet is a coil wrapped around an iron core and a battery. Motion in the motor can be produced with the help of an electromagnet and a permanent magnet. A permanent magnet is made up of a hard magnetic material, and it has strong attraction and repulsion properties. It maintains its magnetism over a long period of time. Whereas electromagnet is produced by the current flowing through a coil of wire wound around a piece of iron. Electromagnet behaves as a magnet as long as the current flows through the coil. Both these magnets, as in the permanent magnet and the electromagnet, along with the electrical supply connections, are enclosed in a casing. One end of the coil is connected to the negative terminal of the battery, and the other end of the coil is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. When the electrical supply is on, then the current starts flowing in the coil from the positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery. And when a current flows through the coil, it produces a magnetic field around it, and starts behaving like an electromagnet. So, this electromagnet is lying inside the magnetic field of this permanent magnet. Now comes the working principle of a DC motor. Whenever an electromagnet is placed in a magnetic field, it experiences a mechanical force. And the direction of this mechanical force that this electromagnet will experience is determined by Fleming's left-hand rule. Now, let's learn this left-hand rule. If we completely stretch the first finger, the second finger, and the thumb of our left hand, such that the three fingers are mutually perpendicular to each other, and the direction of magnetic field is represented by the first finger. The direction of the current is represented by the second finger. Then the thumb represents the direction of the force experienced by the current carrying conductor. So here, on the left side of the coil, this is the direction of the current. This is the direction of the magnetic field. So if we place a left hand rule here, mechanical force that will be experienced by the coil on the left side will be upwards. And the right side of the coil, this is the direction of the current. And this is the direction of the magnetic field. So, the mechanical force that will be experienced by the electromagnet will be downwards. So, the two sides of electromagnets are experiencing mechanical force in opposite directions. The left side is experiencing the force in an upward direction, and the right side is experiencing the force in the downward direction. So, the electromagnet is continuously experiencing mechanical force in opposite directions, because of which it starts rotating. The electromagnet keeps rotating as long as the circuit remains closed, as in, as long as the current flows through the coil. Hence, the object which is connected to the electromagnet. For example, the fan blades of a toy airplane keep on rotating until the circuit does not open or break. When the circuit is open, no current flows through the circuit, and the motor stops working because the coil is no longer an electromagnet. 
and the object connected to the electromagnet stops rotating. In this way, electricity applied to the coil transforms into motion of the coil. And the direction of rotation can be controlled by changing the direction of the flow of the current. We will learn about the DC motor more in detail in our higher sections. This is just an introduction. So, in short, a motor has a permanent magnet, and an electromagnet and battery. And the permanent magnet continuously attracts and repels electromagnets. And as a result, the electromagnet moves, and whatever you attach to the electromagnet rotates. So, in any object, we attach the movable part of the electromagnet and the permanent magnet rotates the electromagnet and the part moves. So this is the concept of a DC motor and in this way we convert electricity into kinetic energy. Or this way we use electrical energy to produce motion. Now let's learn the concept of conversion of electric energy into sound energy. We hear a lot of sounds in our daily life such as the sound of a music player, sound of a radio, sound produced by vehicles, and some industries also produce sound. Sound is created with the help of vibrations, or every sound is the result of some vibrations. The air near the vibrating body gets vibrated and enters your ear in the form of waves, which enables you to hear the sound. Now let's learn how electricity can be used to produce sound. We have already discussed that electricity can be transformed into kinetic energy by the concept of electromagnetism. Similarly, electromagnetism can be used to generate sound. Now let's learn it with the help of an example. Let's first see the basic part of this doorbell or electric bell, a coil of wire wound around the U-shaped iron. The second thing is a spring-loaded iron arm, which is positioned close to the electromagnet. The third is a hammer, which is attached to one end of the arm. The fourth is a small gong, which is positioned near the hammer. Next part is the contact screw. This stays in contact with the spring-loaded arm when the circuit is open. All of these parts are arranged in a circuit with the battery and a button. As you can see in the picture, here we have the battery, here we have the coil, and then here is the button to turn on the circuit. Here we have the spring-loaded arm, and this is our gong. Here is the hammer attached to the spring-loaded arm, and this is the connecting screw, which is in contact with the spring-loaded arm when the circuit is open. Now we have to see what happens when the circuit is closed, or when we switch on the bell. When the switch is turned on or the circuit is made open, what happens? The current flows through the coil, and this U-shaped iron piece becomes an electromagnet, and it attracts a spring-loaded arm towards itself. And the hammer touches the gong, and it makes a sound. But the circuit is broken right away. That is, as the spring-loaded arm is attracted towards the electromagnet, contact with this connecting screw breaks. And as a result, the circuit breaks, or the circuit is open. It is no longer a closed circuit. But as it's a spring-loaded arm, it gets pushed back towards the connecting screw due to the action of the spring and the circuit will be open again, and the hammer touches the gong again, and again it produces sound. And it happens in a cyclic manner. We hear the sound of the bell in a continuous fashion. So let's repeat what is happening. As we turn on the switch, four things happen in a cyclic manner. The first one is that the piece of iron becomes an electromagnet, and then attracts a spring-loaded arm towards itself and the hammer touches the gong which produces a sound. But as it's attracted towards the electromagnet, contact between the screw and the arm is lost, because of which the circuit becomes open. 
and the arm is no longer attracted towards the electromagnet. But as the arm is spring-loaded, it gets pushed back towards the connecting screw and the circuit becomes open again. In this way, electricity is producing sound energy. This was so interesting, how the electromagnet is used to produce a sound. So friend, we learned how electricity produces motion or kinetic energy and how electricity produces sound energy.